Hey guys, Nal here. So, not long ago I pre-ordered some Tundra trackers and it's going to be a good while until those things start shipping. So, in the meantime I started to look for some other options to full body. Uh, there's your obvious stuff like, you know, Connect VR and Apple Tag trackers, but I wanted something a little bit more interesting. And I came across this project called Slime VR. And if you look at it, it's actually pretty simple. You just take a microcontroller with Wi-Fi capabilities and a IMU that has all these like sensors and stuff. And what it does, it just takes the data from the IMU, sends it over Wi-Fi to a Slime VR server running on your PC. Then it connects to Steam VR and it does all this fun stuff. Now I don't have the Slime VR server, but we can still tech, uh, test this with a Track software. And yeah, it's it's called a Track. I yeah, uh, yeah, so anyway. <laughs> so basically, we can actually build these things and it's all open source and it's actually really cool. So, some parts we will need for this project is a Node MCU, uh, it's basically an ESP8266, a BNO08X, B85, or whatever. This is the IMU that we, we will be using. You can use other IMUs, but this one is probably the best one. We're going to be also using a TP4056. This is just for charging and protection of the battery. A slide switch just for turning it on and off. A lithium battery, and I just pulled mine from a Bluetooth keyboard. And some wire, and I just pulled mine from a IDE cable. We also need uh, a breadboard, some jumper wires for testing. Also, you might need some tools like a soldering iron, some wire strippers, and stuff like that. So these parts work for me and uh, you're welcome to change them for your own project because there's a worldwide chip shortage and you might not be able to find the exact IMU I used for this. I mean thankfully on the GitHub page Erin has listed the current compatible sensors that will work and your results may vary depending on which sensor you use. Uh, if you're unsure about anything you can always join the Slime VR Discord server down below. They're pretty friendly and um, yeah. So before we start doing anything, I want to show you how much it cost me. I want to be completely transparent and say that I just ordered the parts that I just needed. That was the BNL080 or 8X chip, the uh, Node MCU, TP4056, and some slide switches. Uh, the wire and batteries and tools I already had. So if you don't have them, you probably need to factor them into your own cost of your own project. So here on the screen is the cost of everything. I spent around uh, $35.24 for buying two IMUs from AliExpress and getting them shipped to the US. I bought three Node MCUs off of Amazon for $14, uh, 12 TP4056 BMS uh, for $10, and that gave me like a really good like price per part. And I can use these TP4056 chips and a lot of other things too, not just this project. And I bought 100 slide switches and that goes for the same for the TP4056, is that I can use these in a lot of other projects because I just don't have slide switches laying around. All right, enough with all the talking. Let's grab our breadboard and our Node MCU and plug our Node MCU into the breadboard. Then we're going to grab our IMU, this is a BNO080 chip, and that's just going to plug in just like so. So then we need to connect everything with jumper wires, so we're just going to take five of them and connect the 3.3 from the Node MCU to the VCC pin on the IMU. Then we're going to connect our ground to our ground. Next we're going to connect our data pins, so D1 will connect to the INT pin. Next uh, we're going to connect D2 to SCL. And then finally D3 will connect to SDA. And that's it. And I bumped the camera right here, so forget about that. So uh, with all the hardware done, all we need to do is now upload the firmware. 
And to upload the firmware, we need to mess with some code. Don't worry, it's pretty simple. I know, no one likes code, but it's pretty simple. I'll walk you guys through it. So first off, what we're gonna do is uh, download and install Visual Studio Code. It's completely free, so once that's installed, you need to grab the platform IO IDE extension that can be found in the Visual Studio Marketplace. So subscribe to that and it should install within Visual Studio Code. So next one, what we need is the driver for programming the ESP. This is just the little programmer IC. You need to download the driver from the website. Uh, it's uh, just Google Silicon Labs CP2010X driver and go to their website and download that. Once the driver is installed, uh, let's grab the latest version of the firmware from the Slime of VR GitHub page and download and extract that zip folder. To get things ready, hold down the flash button on the ESP while plugging in the board to your PC. Under the Devices tab in Visual Studio Code, you should be able to see the Silicon Lab CP2010X blah 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 and just note down the COM port because uh, we will need it for uh, a little bit later. Now open up the firmware by going to Platform IO Home and click Open Project and then select the Slime VR folder we extracted from earlier. Now on the left we should be able to see the files. This is where we will configure all the firmware for our devices. Um, you should be able to upload the firmware without editing much or anything, but for future reference I'll show you how to change and define some settings. First, uh, click on the platform INI file. Make sure the board uh, equals is set to node MCU v2 because that's the board we're using. Underneath uh, monitor uh, speed, add upload port and then equals and then add the COM port we noted down from earlier under the devices tab. This is to make our lives a little easier when uploading the code so it doesn't like ask you what COM port you want to choose and stuff. Next what we need to do is add in our Wi-Fi credentials. So click on Wi-Fi credentials.h and add your network name and password. With that all set, then click on defines.h. Around line 37 is where it says uh, parameters uh, of IMU and board used. So set the type of hardware you will be using. In this case uh, of this video, I'm actually using a BNO080 and a Node MCU and a single IMU. Now you should see some if else statements grayed out. This is just the IDE telling you uh, what's uh, selected. So uh, scroll down a little bit where you see your uh, board and you actually now see the pin numbers. So make sure SDA, SEL, and INT are all correctly set and connected. So um, in our case, we're actually gonna be using this um, with the battery. So it's only gonna run if it is connected to a computer with the uh, serial monitor enabled. So what we're gonna have to do is go under main.cpp uh, file and then go to line 38 and comment out while and then serial So this will actually run when it just powers on and doesn't have to wait for the serial monitor to connect to the ESP And that basically should be it uh, So save everything and now it's time to upload With the ESP in flash mode click the arrow pointing to the right in the bottom of the IDE and it should upload with that done, open up the serial monitor by clicking the plug icon and you should see the output coming from the 8266. And it should say connected to BNO0XY and then on that certain I squared C address. Yeah, and then once it's connected, just um, fire up the OO tracker software and it should pick it up and work. Okay, so it's time to officially assemble everything. So it's really dependent on what kind of battery you have. Uh, you don't have to assemble it like the way I did, but I basically put everything around the battery, if you know what I'm trying to say here. Well, this video right here you're watching is me doing everything. So I actually cut some cardboard to protect the battery, so you just kind of like do two layers that are about the same size as the battery, and I just kind of put tape around it. And like I said before, this is just to protect the battery if you puncture it or, I don't know, yeah, solder around it. So it's always good to kind of protect your lithium cells, especially when you do not have a 3D printed case. But if you do have a 3D printed case, good on you. You actually planned ahead. 
unlike me where I did not and I just kind of winged it. So with that, uh, with the cardboard, we can actually hot glue our components to it. Now is it kind of nice hot glue in it? It kind of depends on who you ask. It's If done right, I think it comes out alright. It's still not a very permanent thing because hot glue does kind of come apart after a while, a while, but hey, it works. So that's what we're actually going to start wiring up first is to wire up our battery and our slide switch to our um, uh, Node MCU. So it's pretty simple. Uh, here's a schematic, which not really like a schematic, but it's just a diagram, which I kind of showed. This is how I wired up everything. Uh, basically, you take your battery and you just connect it to the BMS and then take the output pins and just wire the ground to you know the ground of your ESP. Make sure it's on the um, left side of the ESP. This is where the voltage regulator kind of gets its power from. Uh, the output pin goes through the slide switch so you can just turn it on and off. And that connects directly to the voltage in pin or I don't know what it's actually called. VN? I don't know. But that VN, VN and ground pin next to each other, they actually go to the uh, little voltage regulator built in on your node MCU. So this takes whatever voltage range, I think it's like from, t I don't know, not even 2 volts, around like 3.3 .3 to like 5 volts. And it would just, on the output side, it would just keep it at 3.3 .3 volts just for your microcontroller and everything. So as your battery drains, it's going to still regulate that voltage and make sure it's at 3.3. So I opted to put the slide switch um, right there, not connecting and disconnecting the battery because I mean that's the BMS is right there. It charges and makes sure that the output pins are not shorted. So have all the funny business happening after after the BMS. So with that all said and done, it's time to wire up our uh, BNO 085 or 80 chip or whatever and uh, IMU you could be using. Uh, basically, VCC and ground, uh, just like in the breadboard, connects straight to the 3.3 output and ground. And then our data wires, our three data wires, SCL, SDA, and INT, just connect to D1, D2, and D3. And that's kind of it. Now, in the footage you're looking at, I'm actually just taking my time and wiring these um, pretty meticulously. Mainly because, you know, it's kind of nice to have a small and neat little project. And I think it actually came out pretty well. And I think the overall build time took about an hour, actually, about 60 minutes. And I think my footage reflects that pretty well. And here's the final product. This tracker charges using Type-C. It's only the connector, so there's really no fast charging. For comparing weight, it's pretty small, clocking in at 23 grams, while my first build using an iPhone battery weighs around 39 grams. Compare all this to an HTC tracker which sits at 90 grams, it's pretty light. There's also a nice little feature with a TP56 where you can still power the ESP while charging, which is a nice bonus. Okay, so it's time to test this baby out. So after I gave it a full charge, and connected it to my Wi-Fi, it shows up on the OWO track uh, software, which is fantastic. So, right, what you're seeing right now is actually my pass-through camera on my HTC Vive. Uh, so then, basically, you can see real time what I'm doing in person and also virtually. So I'm just kind of sitting in Steam VR limbo, and I'm actually running the calibration and. Uh, Right now you actually will probably see me holding it in a weird position, like it's kind of like a an axe or something like that. Uh, mainly because the orientation of the sensor is not meant to be kind of flat. Now this is not a big deal and it should just be automatically calibrated and stuff when we have the uh, Slime VR server. But we don't, so we just kind of have this to mess around with uh, for now. But uh, just kind of messing around in OWO track, it's actually pretty cool. And the fact that it's uh, a lot smaller than a HTC Vive uh, tracker puck makes me kind of excited. Now, uh, according to this chart, it's not very accurate. Uh, you can see it has the accuracy of uh, connect to VR, 
which doesn't bother me too much because that connect to VR is actually uh, what I've seen is actually pretty uh, accurate alone so I guess we'll just have to wait for the uh, slime VR server and really give it a full test additionally I noticed that the latency was very low as you can see it's all real time and uh, it's very uh, impressive it's like right up there with the um, HTC uh, Vive trackers you can see you holding it in one hand with the uh, controller and spinning it around and you see it's just no latency I can't notice anything but uh, this is just going through the OWO track and uh, not through the server so we can't give a full verdict but when I do get my hands on that server that would be amazing I, I'm really excited to see where this uh, project goes and one more thing this is also open source so we could do anything so under that visual studio code we can add like lights vibration motors or anything else you want to add so the sky's the limit and i think this is a great platform to start tinkering on so that'll be it for now when the slime vr server releases i will be making a part two to this video i'll be exploring the possibilities and limits of using the slime vr trackers so don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date when i release my next video and that'll be it for now. I'll see you guys in the next video.